Hey, Justin here with Stay at Home Dads Podcast. Welcome to the place I talk about many different things that go on in my stay at home dad life. Things with my kids, my family, being a better father and a better husband, men's mental and physical wellness, parenting struggles that I have, success stories as well. I also talk about parenting and life tips that I personally have, as well as things that I research and find online. Lastly, just random things that I think about things that provoke some sort of thought within me and I find interesting, I come on here and I talk about with you. So I hope something in that realm speaks to you or entertains you or educates you in some fashion. But anyways, thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for downloading the show. All right. So yes, it has been a minute, hasn't it? It's been quite a while since I have come on and had a new episode. I think it's been three weeks, almost a month. So damn, Justin, what are you doing? But I know, I know, uh, busy time, holidays, Christmas, all that stuff. It just is family time. And I took it as such. I took that time and I did nothing outside of my family. I took a break from my computer. I took a break from projects. And I really just hung out with my kids more, hung out with my wife more, and really just enjoyed that time. And I really hope that you did that as well. Hopefully you had some extra time off to to enjoy that, to enjoy their time. Kids were off of school. A lot of people had vacation, stuff like that. My wife had two weeks off. So it was real nice to just kind of get into that family mode a little bit. And then after the new year, my wife surprised me with a trip to Florida, just her and I. So we had grandma watching the girls and that was pretty awesome. That was quite a surprise. She planned and booked the entire thing. And it was kind of funny because you know how I talk about phones and spouses and kids and everybody being on tablets and phones and things way too much. But there was a day before this trip that I was getting kind of internally annoyed with her, let's say. She was on her phone a lot. She was on her computer a lot. It was, the usage was high. And she just was, you know, in that mode of finding stuff out. And I had no idea what she was doing. And I was honestly about to say something like, hey, let's uh, let's put the phone down. Let's be present, right? Well, she was planning and booking this trip. So That evening, I had gone to bed. I wasn't even on my phone really a bunch that day. And we go to bed, and I check my phone right before I'm going to sleep. And right there in my email is a trip itinerary that was from my wife. So I asked her, I said, hey, what the heck is going on? And that's when, you know, the cat was out of the bag, and she told me what she was planning. So that was pretty cool. I was quite impressed. Also very thankful that she did that for us. It was a great time down there. We went down to Naples and did some real touristy stuff. Had a good time. Rode some Sedgways and did a little uh, tour of the Everglades, which was was pretty awesome. So maybe we'll go back with the kids. So I kind of treat it as a vacation for us, but also a little uh, investigative work to see if we want to bring the kids there. And we honestly would. So... All right, anyways, moving on. Dog stuff, you know, I got to mention it. It's a a huge part of my life right now. We got this family dog, right? Got it before Christmas. My kids, you know, big dream for them. They got their dog, all this. But goddamn, I forgot how big of a pain in the ass having a puppy around is. So much work. Oh my gosh. Cute little bastard. Don't get me wrong. But such a time suck. It is just, I don't know if I forgot or what, but it is ridiculous. Outside every 30 to 40 minutes, accidents happening in the house, chewing on everything. She was even chewing on the drywall. I don't know what in the hell she's doing, but she was gnawing on the wall and I had to go move her so she would stop doing that. It's been kind of hard. I've hated moments of it. I've been very frustrated. I've wanted to give up. And, uh, which I don't know how you do that once you pay for a dog, but you know, these are just things that you say in the back of your head and you get frustrated, but I know it'll get better, right? My kids have been huge helpers with this whole thing. 
I don't expect them to step up as much and be as responsible as me as an adult. I don't think I should expect them to do that. But they are taking on some some duties. They are really stepping up, and I believe they're learning from it. I hear a lot of people talk about getting animals, and and they say, oh, it'll teach my kid responsibility, and it's going to be their priority, or they're going to be responsible for it, to look after something, and it, it'll be good for them, good for their character, something like that. And sure, that may be a slight benefit that they get out of it, but in no way should the expectation be that they will do and handle every aspect of that animal, right? And then these, some of these parents get mad when the kid, you know, doesn't do what's needed when the time comes. And then the dog has an accident on the floor or does this or does that. And uh, it just kind of falls apart. You know, it's just not really fair to expect, especially me, it wouldn't be fair to expect a nine and a six-year-old to understand the schedule of a 15-week-old dog to take it out all the time and do all this stuff and and all that. They're getting responsibility from it, but I think there should be a limit to that. Does that make sense? Age-appropriate responsibility. Sure, I think if you have a 15-year-old kid, they can handle taking the dog out every 20 minutes. My six-year-old, you know, not so much. So all I'm saying is don't buy an animal and expect your kids to do all the work because it ain't going to happen. But yeah, aside from that, aside from me pulling out my hair all the freaking time, dog ownership is great, you know? Uh, My kids love it. I'll just keep telling myself it's great. It's great, Justin. It's great. It'll get better. I just keep repeating that in my head. Anyways, let's move on to uh, a new topic for this lovely year. Leave the dog stuff uh, behind us. New year, new me, right? That's what uh, the common saying is. It's a new calendar year, and I'm going to make big changes, right? I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, and I want to grow, and I want to expand, and I want to do something or learn something. That's the consensus around this time of year. I know I'm a little late because it's towards the end of January. So, hey, maybe some of you have had some time to to uh, have these resolutions and goals and and adapt them or fail. I don't know. Depends on where you're at on the, the scale here. Oops, hit the counter. Anyways, that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about resolutions and goals and, and things like that. And it just kind of goes along with the theme of New Year, right? We all have goals. A lot of these really don't change year after year, right? We want to grow in some way. We want to do more. We want to, I don't know, many things. Just insert here what you're thinking about. So what makes a resolution different? Or are they different? I asked myself this question the other day when I was thinking about my own life and goals and resolutions that I want to have this year, 2024. And I was like, well, I want to grow this show, sure. I want to set up some more ways to make money or start making money because I really don't make a whole lot of money because uh, I'm a stay-at-home dad, so there, there's that. I want to get my eating habits back in line. I want to do more activities with my kids outside, sports and things. I want to drink less caffeine. I want to read more books, more time with a spouse, right? You get the idea. These are all things, personally anyways, that I would like to do. But what differentiates those things from being a goal or a resolution? And like I said, a lot of these things don't really change, do they? We seem to always have the same ones every year. I want to quit drinking. I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to something, right? And plus, we always have some thing in our lives, some aspect of our lives that we want to improve on, something we want to expand on. I think we can all agree that we're pretty hard on ourselves. Even if we don't tell anybody, we're pretty hard on ourselves. We always have something we want to improve on, whether it be, like I said, how we eat, how we look, what we know. And it's kind of interesting. I don't think there's a single person who gets up in the morning and says, oh yeah, man, 
My life is perfect. I have everything. I know everything. And I don't need to improve on a single aspect of my life. You know, that's, that's pretty uncommon, right? And yes, before you say it, I know a lot of people are happy with their lives. They're content. Maybe they're living their dream, which is great. I don't want to take anything away from anybody. But I think it's also human nature to always want more, to always want to work toward something, to grow and expand in some way, big or small. Would you agree? I would agree. So how does a goal differ from a resolution? I think they're similar, yes, but resolutions are more of a habit or a behavior that we want to change, something that we always say this time of year, or at least three weeks ago when this was totally relevant, that, uh, hey, this is a habit I want to change. So let's take smoking, for example. That's a popular resolution I think people have. Saying I want to quit smoking this year as your resolution is just saying you want to change something without laying out any specific steps. It's like having a treasure map with an X on it, but there's no path or clues to follow to get to your treasure, right? You've made the proclamation. Awesome. Now, how are you going to get to where you need to go? Now, a goal, a goal of not smoking, what would that look like? Well, having a goal is like having a roadmap. It's the treasure map with all of the steps and all the lines and all the ways to go to get to that X. It's not empty like the resolution map was. Does that make sense? A goal, when all planned out, is not just yelled from the rooftops like a saying. I want to have more guests on this show, and then I do nothing to achieve it. A goal is something planned out. You have specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound objectives. Have you ever heard of this before? That acronym is actually called SMART, which I have never heard of this until I started researching about today's show, but apparently it's a popular method of achieving your goals. So I want to explain this S-M-A-R-T, the smart thing, and I'm going to stick with the quitting smoking goal. That's not my goal. I, I don't smoke, but you could really put anything in there, losing weight, working out, etc. but I'm just going to go with the not smoking as an example. So S, specific. I want to quit smoking. That's your goal, right? That's your specific goal. I want to lose weight, make more money. According to this Forbes article that I'll link in the description so you can check it out, they say to be clear on this. Be clear and define what you want to accomplish. What actions will you need to take? If you're smoking, maybe buy less cigarettes. Maybe use nicotine patches. Supplement with something else in your life when you get that urge to smoke. Eat carrots or celery in lieu of smoking. Maybe divert your attention to a hobby instead of smoking. Write all this down. There should be a form for this, seriously. And maybe there is. Maybe there's a form for this uh, smart thing. or You can just write it down in a notebook. But seriously, write everything down to give yourself a tangible copy to look at. I think it'll help. But yes, anyways, S specific. So specify your goal. Next is M, measurable. These are the numbers, the data that'll go with your goal. It will make your goal trackable. Cigarettes come in packs, right? They come in packs and cases. Use days and weeks on the calendar. It's pretty easy to measure if you're going to reduce over time or do it cold turkey, right? Same goes with weight loss or changing eating habits. Scale out your food. Weigh what you eat. Weigh yourself every morning. And don't forget, write all this down. Keep like a journal or a notebook or something and write everything down. If you smoke a pack a day and you want to reduce that to half, then keep track of it. That will help you kind of see where you're at with your goal. A is for achievable. Let's make sure that the goal is actually realistic. A lot of people, myself included, may have a tendency to just throw out some outlandish goal or resolution that isn't realistic. And then when our goal starts to look unachievable, your enthusiasm and your drive to keep going it diminishes. 
and then you'll want to quit or just ignore it and move on and forget about your goal or resolution. And that's not what we want. It's just like this White Stripe song, which I've mentioned on the show probably years ago. It's a, it's a White Stripe song called Little Acorns. And it says, if your goal is too big, break it down into smaller pieces and achieve those pieces piece by piece. I would almost rather have the A in this stand for actions. And this is where you would put out your planned actions for reaching your goal. I think that might be a little bit better. Seems to make more sense to me. I mean, because we know the goal needs to be achievable, right? So maybe let's write that down in our notebook here, because you should remember, right? Let's write down actions to take to reach that goal. I kind of like, I guess you could flip-flop. You could be achievable or actions, either or, I guess. All right, moving on. So now we're to R. So we've gone through S, specific, M, measurable, A, achievable, or if you're me, actions to put down. And now we're to R, which is relevant. Forbes says don't set goals just as an exercise for something to do, but you need to define the key benefit of that goal within your own life or to yourself. How is achieving this goal going to help or benefit me? Granted, this is Forbes, so it's kind of written more for someone that has goals in a corporation or in more of a business sense. So there's that, but I'm guessing we can still just kind of adapt it to ourselves here. But yes, make sure your goal is relevant to you. What is the benefit here? Now, see, I would almost change R to maybe resources. It sounds a little bit better. And then you could compile and write down in your notebook the resources you may need to accomplish your goal. That makes a little more sense to me. So there's just a little food for thought there. All right, T, the last one is time bound. And I think this is an important one. Give yourself a deadline. What is a goal if there's no end date to achieve it by, right? How are you going to know if you succeeded or you failed if there's no end date? Like with smoking, though, that may never be done. That may be a conscious thing you have to think about all the time for years to come. Maybe a, a daily struggle and a daily fight to not light up that cigarette, right? Or it may take years to achieve it, especially if you slowly decrease that over time, it may take more than a year to achieve it. Same goes with diet changes and losing weight. Those things don't always just happen and then you're done. You don't have to think about them. You you have to think about not eating certain foods every single day. So give yourself an end date. Give yourself a, a finish date for that goal. Possibly even check in dates throughout the year. But also remember that some goals will be, the finish line will be very far away, maybe even more than a year. So just kind of keep that in the back of your head. Also, don't forget to write all this stuff down. Keep a log. So that's SMART. That's S-M-A-R-T. Like I said, I've never heard of that. It's kind of interesting. Forbes talks about it being just the the best way to achieve goals you have. So, and I kind of like those maybe give them the little adjustments that I had talked about, but I think it's a good idea. It's a good place to start. Instead of just proclaiming your goal or your resolution, have your goal or have your resolution rather, and then write it down and then break it down in the smart field, write it down in your book and pencil everything in and then attack it throughout the year. Okay. Also, I think it takes about 21 days for something to become a habit but I've also heard that it can be almost 60 days to create that habit. So that's something to keep in mind. That's only two months. If you think about it, 60 days, two months. In that aspect, you can do anything in two months if you stick to it. That's only 60 days. That's nothing. And then once you get past those 60 days, then you can, you know, move the goalposts. I've talked about goalposts moving before. I don't remember what I said about it. But yeah, then you can move the goalposts and then, and then keep going. All right, I made it. I'm smoke-free for 60 days. And then move it down there and say, okay, let's make another 60 days. Let's make another 60 days. A habit that I started doing is drinking a glass of water in the morning every morning before I wake up. And I've done that now for, I don't know, it's been quite a few months. I used to do it with stretching, but I kind of fell off on the stretching aspect, which kind of sucks. But uh, yeah, I still, before I drink anything or eat anything, drink a nice eight ounces of water and uh, get my day going. And now I just, I just do it every day. I don't even really think about it. I just, when I wake up, I get my kids up and I hit a glass of water and it's, 
it's just second nature for me. So I think that 60 day, 21 day thing is pretty, pretty accurate, pretty true because now I don't even think about it. But like with anything, consistency is key. Repetition strengthens the neural pathways in the brain. I'm no doctor, but I read that somewhere, okay? And also this is gonna take time, but it's also gonna take more than just motivation. It's gonna take discipline. It's gonna take a lot of uh, sticking to your guns on what you need to do. You need to discipline yourself and stay consistent. Even when you don't want to, you need to if it's important to you, and it should be. If it's a goal you made, then it should be something that's important. I would also like to add that I heard resolutions where you, you take things away are oftentimes more difficult than the resolutions where you add something. Taking away is depriving you of something that you did or you enjoyed. So yes, quitting smoking or quitting caffeine or eating less may be harder than reading more books or going for more walks or drinking more water, stuff like that. So maybe adding something along with you quitting something, maybe that would be helpful. Quit smoking then uh, eat healthy finger foods or do something a little bit more with your hands. I don't know. I'm shooting in the dark here. It sounds, sounds good, right? Or quitting caffeine. Maybe drink non-caffeinated hot tea in the morning because then you still have that action of drinking something hot like coffee, but there's no caffeine in it. Makes sense? This a little tidbit for you. So now we have our resolution, right? Or goals, let's say. We have a plan of attack. We know what we want and how we're going to reach it, but what if we fail? What if we make it a week, two weeks, a month or more, and then we backslide on whatever we're trying to do? Then what do we do? Well, you know I'm not gonna say that uh, just throw in the towel and give up, right? Move on and, and just forget about it. I mean, I'm not gonna say that. Sure, that's an option. It's a cop-out shit option is what it is, if you ask me. But just because you slipped and had a cigarette doesn't mean that you just say to hell with the week or hell with even the day. Falling off the wagon and sucking down a whole pack doesn't mean that you just give up. Don't do that, right? We just have to get back on right after that failure occurred. We just have to get back on that horse and keep going. Reflect a bit. Take a moment to think about what led up to the setback. Adjust some things if needed. Figure out what worked and what didn't, and just try to find out what happened and what caused it, okay? Also, celebrate the progress you've made. If you made it a week or a month, tell yourself that. Tell that little voice in your head. Say, yeah, man, I did it. I made it a week without smoking. Sweet. Or if you're stopping and lessening your caffeine consumption, and you made it a month, and one night you got shit sleep, and then you woke up the next morning and drank a whole pot of coffee, that's okay. You made it a month. Tell yourself, man, I made it a month. Now readjust and keep going. Like I said, I'm not a smoker here. I'm not trying to quit smoking or anything. That's just an easy example for me to use. Although I am trying to lessen my caffeine intake. It's, a, it's been a tough one. It's been an up and down battle. I used to drink 50 ounces of coffee a day. And now I'm down to about 18, so, you know, that's progress, right? Good job, Justin. Keep working on the uh, lessening of the caffeine. But anyways, you know, just some tips here, just some little things that uh, I wanted to talk about on my first new show of 2024. So, uh, yeah, hopefully I'm giving you some decent content. But anyways, that's about all I have for today's episode of Stay at Home Dad's podcast. Just, you know, like I said, some uh, interesting info that I could discuss on this new year. Helpful tips, maybe. Hopefully something that uh, boosts your confidence in succeeding in your resolution or your goal. Anyways, if you have any questions or comments for me, or maybe you have a great story you want to talk about, or you want to you want me to talk about a certain topic, please uh, reach out to me. Instagram, at stayathomedads underscore podcast, or on podbean.com. You can get me at either one of those addresses. Also, let me know how your progress is going with your goals and your resolutions. Hopefully well. Hopefully you're not backsliding. Hopefully you're conquering everything you want to conquer. And yes, back to new episodes. Finally, yes, done with the holidays, done with the travel. 
I love doing this show. I really do. I love sharing my stories and my opinions and all that stuff. But uh, like I said a few weeks ago, I may start doing these every other week. We shall see. Try to give you the best content that I can provide instead of putting up a show to put up a show. So I want to put out meaningful, thoughtful, and helpful content for you. So that's my goal. But uh, anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to tell a friend, please do that. I'm on all the streaming platforms. And uh, yeah, don't forget to reach out and email me. Anyways, thanks for listening. And I will talk to you maybe next week. We'll see if I put a new one out. But uh, anyways, take care.